Since 2014, the Golf R has been the most complete four-wheel drive hot hatch you can buy. During that time, it's seen off competition from the likes of Mercedes and Audi. It's so good that even now, a few months before it goes off sale for good, it's still the best in class. But BMW thinks it's got something to say about that. Before we get stuck in, have you subscribed to the Car Guru's YouTube channel yet? We post new and used car reviews, helping you to work out which car is right for you. Go on, tap that subscribe button. BMW's challenger to the Golf R is the all-new M135i. The third-generation 1 Series has abandoned the model's rear-wheel drive heritage in favour of a front-wheel drive layout, or, in the case of the M135i, four-wheel drive. Like the Golf R, it's designed to be a more civilised, grown-up sort of hot hatch. Think of it as the hot hatch for people who wouldn't be seen dead in a Honda Civic Type R. The Golf R, the Mercedes-AMG A35, the Audi S3, and now, the BMW M135i, four cars from four different manufacturers, all with almost exactly the same technical specifications. They've all got two litre, four cylinder turbo petrol engines with around 300 horsepower, and they've all got front biased four wheel drive system. Clearly, that recipe just works. The M135i is the latest addition to the class, but it's faithful to that blueprint. Power is rated at 302 bhp and torque at a very strong 332 pounds foot. Driving through an 8-speed auto, it'll hit 62 miles per hour in 4.8 seconds and run on to 155. The Golf R is slightly down on power and torque compared to the BMW, although not by much. It's rated at 296 brake horsepower and 295 pounds foot of torque, but it's got a faster shifting 7-speed dual clutch gearbox, whereas the BMW has an 8-speed automatic. That helps the Golf R reach 62 miles per hour one tenth of a second quicker than the M135i. Its top speed is also 155. In terms of price, there's nothing in it. Well, there's 250 quid in it. The Golf R costs 36,180 pounds and the M135i 36,430 pounds. The new one series might be a fundamental departure for BMW, but plenty in here is very familiar. The seating position, for instance, is lovely. Steering wheel comes all the way out and the driver's seat drops nice and low. In a performance car, that's really important. Still got a big, fat, chunky steering wheel. A bit too fat and chunky for my taste. But we've also got the driver-centric dashboard, which is classic BMW. It's canted over to face the driver. Material and build quality both feel lovely. The BMW's infotainment system is based around an 8.8 inch touchscreen that does still use the company's very intuitive iDrive rotary control, so you can tap away on the screen or twirl away with a scroll wheel to navigate the various menu systems, which you'll do easily enough since they're very sensibly laid out. Rear seat space is okay, better than any one series to date but still not brilliant, while the boot is good at 380 litres. You know what you're going to get with a Golf interior. Nothing too flashy, but plenty of space, a good quality dashboard, and a very straightforward touchscreen infotainment system. The BMW's interior does feel like a more expensive, more premium place, but then it isn't five years old. I also think the BMW has got a slightly better seating position. By and large though, there's really nothing wrong with the Golf's cabin. The VW's infotainment system is touchscreen only, but it's among the most intuitive in the business with a very easy to navigate menu system. The instrument binnacle is fully digital and can be configured to show all sorts of different information. Rear seat space is better than the BMW's, while the boot is a little smaller at 343 litres. I think we'll start off in the Challenger, the BMW M135i. What do you think of the way it looks? I don't think I love it. It's mostly that front end, isn't it? Otherwise though, in normal day-to-day -day driving, it's very good. The ride is settled, calm, composed. This particular car has got the optional adaptive dampers, which really help there just to smooth out any imperfections in the road surface. The steering has that typical modern BMW sort of gloopiness to it. it. Feels a bit stodgy around the straight ahead, but once you get up to higher speeds, it does become super accurate. But it's just an effortless car to use day to day. You could use it just like you would a 118i without compromise. It's a very practical, relaxing, 
easy car to drive. The M135i's torquier engine makes itself known through the mid-range where it pulls insistently, but in the real world, the BMW isn't any quicker than the VW. You really do feel that torque pulling through two, three, four thousand RPM. The car does feel quick in that range. It's a responsive engine, good sharp throttle response. The turbo gets going nice and early. It's at the top end though that you discover this engine's shortfalls. It's one of those engines that just fades and wilts at the top end after five and a half thousand RPM, really, it's just about done. It also sounds quite flat. They've clearly tried very hard to tease a little bit of musicality out of the exhaust and perhaps piping it into the cabin, but it's quite a flat, quite a bland four cylinder turbo sound. These type of engines, they really just sound more or less the same, and this one doesn't buck that trend. It's quite a flat, tuneless sort of engine. How about the gearbox? An automatic rather than a dual clutch. It's very smooth in normal driving, and really, when you get going a little bit faster, you just don't miss a dual clutch gearbox. It's very, very snappy on the way up in particular. On the way down the gears, it sometimes feels a little bit more hesitant than a dual clutch but you don't miss it. If the M135i is finally going to dethrone the Golf R, it'll need to be sweeter to drive along a winding road. So is it potentially? Now what this car has that the Golf R doesn't have is in the front axle, a Torsen limited slip differential. And when the weather's a little bit touch and go like it is today, and the roads are a bit greasy, you really feel that differential working when you're driving out of a corner on full throttle. You feel it scrabbling away to drag the car away from the bend in a really positive way. That feels great. Dynamically, this car is very impressive. The steering, which is gloopy and a little bit stodgy at low speeds, becomes much sharper, much more accurate at higher speeds. There's really good body control. There's a natural amount of roll that's perfectly in tune with the speed of the steering. There's good grip even in these wet conditions. But what's really significant is that there's more to this car's chassis balance than just insistent understeer. So on the way into a corner, if you dab the brakes a little bit, you can excite the rear end and just feel it finding its way into the apex in this more neutral way rather than just gently understeering its way to the apex. That makes it really good fun to drive. Do I miss the rear-wheel drive M140i? Not really. So why has the Golf R been top of its class for half a decade? Let's remind ourselves. It's always good to get back in a Golf R. These really are fantastic cars, top of their game for five years. One of the key things that makes this car so capable, so talented, is that it's just easy, effortless to use in normal driving. Really good visibility, the steering is light, it feels sharp. Twin clutch gearbox, it's really smooth. Sometimes twin clutch gearboxes can be a little bit jerky, this isn't one of them. It's just an effortless car to use day to day. You can live with this thing just like you would any normal Golf. But two things make the Golf R so much more than just a normal Golf. It's performance and it's all-weather handling. The engine is really crisp and sharp, really good throttle response. But what this car has that the BMW doesn't have is a really lively, energetic top end. So after five and a half thousand RPM, it keeps on spinning all the way up to the red line. That just makes it feel like a a more dramatic, more intense sports car style powertrain. It's a shame that the engine isn't more characterful, but then how many four cylinder turbo engines are especially characterful? You can no longer get a manual transmission in the Golf R. For me, that's not a shame because I always preferred the DSG gearbox anyway. On a bumpy British B road, the Golf R's chassis is nothing short of exquisite. That's what makes the Golf R such a great car. Dynamically, it's just so well judged and so well executed. In slightly miserable conditions like we've got today, it just feels so planted and so secure. And with four wheel drive, it's got really strong traction away from corners. 
the steering is actually really good for modern electrically assisted steering it's really sharp really accurate and it doesn't have that gloopiness that the bmw steering does have really good body control great pliancy over bumps if there's one thing that lets it down it's as i've alluded to already that very nose lead handling balance the chassis balance is persistent understeer and nothing else and that's where the bmw really has an advantage over this car there's nothing to choose between these two cars in terms of price they're almost perfectly matched in terms of performance and everyday usability so the question is which one is more fun to drive it's the bmw at long last somebody has come along and done what audi and mercedes couldn't do bmw with the m135i has finally knocked the golf r from its perch Thank you very much for watching. Remember to comment below, subscribe to the Car Gurus YouTube channel if you haven't already, and head as well to cargurus.co.uk because that's where you'll find a great deal from a top-rated dealer on your next used car.